Okay, so good morning everyone. Um, so today I'm going to start the minimum sufficiency, but before that let me um, talk about another characterization of sufficiency. Okay, so that will be useful uh, in case of minimum sufficiency. So that is called the likelihood. Okay, so um, so this is for the parametric family. So so this means parametric family. So let x card follows if theta of x card theta belongs to This theta is a parameter, and this is a parameter space. Um, then, for given theta one, theta two belonging to discrete theta, the likelihood ratio. So, first of all, I want to uh, know. I want to ask actually. So, uh, so what is the likelihood? So, what is the definition of the likelihood? The stat people should know, right? So the definition of likelihood. So what is the likelihood? Likelihood is a function of the sample, or the likelihood is a function of the uh, parameter, or the both. Likelihood is a function of parameter. Any answer? Uh, likelihood is a function of um, parameter. Parameter, right? So that means given this x car, you are looking into this joint PMA for the PDF. So then yes. it's only the function of the parameter. And that is for the likelihood. Okay. So uh, the likelihood, likelihood is simply uh, the joint. So I'm considering the PDF or PMA. Given the outside sample, that is only the function, only a function of the parameter. Okay, so then, uh, so this is the likelihood. If this x curl is fixed, so then the likelihood ratio is defined as
So this is the this this quantity is the likelihood ratio. So that means if you fix two parameter values in the parameter space and simply look into the ratio of the likelihoods at some fixed point, fixed uh, the observed value of the sample, then it is the likelihood ratio. And uh, and this is defined whenever the sum of these two is positive, right? Otherwise, it may happen zero by zero, and which is undefined actually. So that's why this thing is needed. So whenever uh, the sum is more than zero, then only you can define this likelihood ratio. Okay, so the theorem says, the characterization theorem says that P or P is sufficient. Uh, so if you are not asking any question, so can you please mute? <laughs> Uh, I think uh, Shonko, can you please mute Shonko? Or, yeah, so can you please mute? Okay, so uh, D is sufficient for the parametric family. So parametric family, since it's parametric and I am considering uh, the PDA for the PMF, so I can actually, actually characterize the family using the PDA for the PMF. So let me write it like this, F theta. If this delta x per theta one comma theta two is a function of x curve for all x curve or since I am writing function so it's fine so I should write that for all theta 1 theta 2 belonging to state so that means so this is same as this whole thing is same as saying that this P x curl equal to P y curl will imply this delta x curl theta 1 theta 2 equal to delta y curl theta 1 for all theta 1 theta 2 belonging to state. Because this is the definition of function. So for any given uh, uh, for in, for any given x, so there should be unique y, right? So that means whenever the uh, arguments are same, then the uh, uh, image images should be same. Okay. So this is what uh, is the uh, characterization of uh, sufficient. So the proof is not so difficult. So first of all, um, only if part. Is that it? So, um, so you understand the statement, right? The statement is clear, right? So that means this ratio, the likelihood ratio is simply the function of the statistic. So if that is true, then the statistic is sufficient. Okay, and this should be true for any theta one theta two belonging to the parameter space. Okay, so let uh, T is sufficient. So then that we imply this F theta of X card using the Neyman Fisher factorization theorem. So this simply G theta of P X card into G of X card, right? So now what is this uh, delta x curl theta 1 theta 2? That is simply, so this is simply f theta 1 x curl divided by f theta 2 x curl. And that is simply g theta of p 
dx square or theta 1 theta 2. So it's theta 1 and g theta 2 of dx. So this h is h should be uh, uh, strictly uh, more than 0 because you need uh, you have this restriction. So h is really more than zero since this f theta one x bar plus f theta two x bar that is more than zero. So that's why since there is no theta involved in h, so then so that's why h should be strictly positive, and that's why you can cancel h from numerator and the denominator. And now what is this? This thing is simply a function of t x bar, right? So that is. Delta x squared theta one theta two is the function of dx. So that means only part is proved. So if t is subject, then actually this is true. So now we need to show the other way. So clear, right? This part. I think it's clear. It's not so difficult. So now the deep part. So let this delta x squared theta one theta two is a function of t x squared or theta one theta two belonging to three. So then to show. That there exist functions so that <laughs> if theta of x per is simply g theta of p x per h of x per. Right? So this is simply the Neyman Fisher factorization theorem. So if this is given, you need to show. Then the splitting that you have seen in Neyman Fisher factorization theorem that works. Okay, so now, um, so for any, so we need to show this is true for any theta, for all theta belongs to split theta. That is what we need to show. So now for any fixed. Theta not belonging to script theta. So delta x card theta theta not that is simply uh, f theta of x card and uh, divided by f theta not of x card. Right? So it's, uh, it's given that this is a function of the x card for all theta belongs to strict theta because theta naught is now fixed only theta is varying so that's why this is true for uh, so so this is a function of the x card for all theta belongs to strict theta So that means uh, what is this? So this thing is nothing but g theta of the x card. Because if you fix theta, then this is simply a function of the x card. But if theta varies, then this should be this whole thing should be a function of the x card and theta, right? So that's why this thing is simply g theta of the x card. And now simply what happens? So this, this f theta of x card is simply g theta of the x card into h of x card, where this h of x card is simply f theta naught of x card, right? Because here theta naught is fixed, so that means it's simply a function of x card. So uh, that's why that means this is true, this star is true. Hence, no, okay. Here. So clear, right? 
the proof proof is not so difficult okay i will if the proof is uh, fine or or uh, if it is uh, not so um, not so fine for you guys then you can also ask me later that's fine after seeing the proof in the notes okay so now let's move to the minimal sufficiency so what is the motivation behind uh, finding uh, some sufficient statistic which is minimal minimal in what sense so minimal in what sense uh, the answer of that is let me write the question so minimal in what sense so then mm, here the answer the first one is that to so the dimension should be minimal so for example for barnoli p this x1 up to xn this whole sample x1 sum of xi i equal to 2 to n and sum of xi are all sufficient right so the, this can be uh, checked easily using the exponential family regard right so this all these three all are sufficient so now uh, now the question is which one to choose so obviously you are going to choose this one right because why because the dimension is the least so it has dimension n it has dimension 2 it has dimension 1 so that means choose this one so sum of xi has least dimension and hence choose this proportion m of this three okay so this is the first one the second one is that uh if uh two sufficient statistics two sufficient statistics have same dimension so for example that toy example if you recall if x follows normal zero sigma square or some symmetric distribution there is only one sample x uh, then x and mod x both are sufficient right then choose which one choose that one which uh, somehow simplifies so that means choose that one which is a function of the other so choose that one which simplifies the sigma number so that is actually the main goal right in of sufficiency simplifying the sigma number so which one simplifies more this mod x right so uh, that's why choose that one which is a function of the other so similarly here also if you look this so here also this thing is function of this or this this one is also function of this but not the other way around so that means using this logic also you should choose this one here so that means uh, whenever you are finding uh, the minimal sufficient statistic 
the minimality is with respect to the dimension first first you need to reduce and find the least possible dimension dimensional sufficient statistic and then if there are two or more uh, sufficient statistics having the same dimension then choose that one which is the function of the other so that means if you combine these two the sufficient the minimal sufficient statistic okay so before moving to the definition is this fine any question okay so okay so the definition of minimal sufficient statistic is that so t is minimal sufficient for the model uh, script fee if it is um, it is function is a function of any other sufficient statistic so so actually the goal is to uh, simplify the underlying sigma log that's it so that one will simply so which one will uh, simplify the sigma algebra most so that one which is the function of all the other because that is uh, that is why why that is true because since uh, if, if you look into the definition of function that's why it's true actually so the function is that the function is either one to one or many to one right it cannot be one to many so that's why the if you consider the function of all the other it will simplify the sigma algebra okay um so now um so let me explain more so the first one is that sir yeah but if we obtain two fun yeah, basically two sufficient statistics of yeah. same dimension but none of them is a function of another can it happen yeah it can happen so uh it can happen so minimal sufficient statistic no it cannot happen actually because if minimal sufficient statistic exists then yeah they, that can happen if the minimal sufficient statistic does not exist yeah that can happen but if it exists then if you find something so two two statistics which are uh, which are uh, um, which are you are seeing that those should be minimal sufficient then one should be the function of the other so let me write it so the minimal sufficient statistic may not be unique but if um if you consider so do you guys know the equivalence class or if okay let me not go into that so if if you have two minimal sufficient statistics p e and w then there exist functions g1 and g2 Such that p is g1 of w and w is g2 of and that is using the definition, right? And since uh, this is true, these two things are true. So obviously, this g1 and g2 these are one to one, right? So g1 and g2 are one to one. So check. 
I think this is given in the uh, assignment uh, as the first problem. So it's very easy because since the range, since the image uh, is func image, uh, so so in what happens in function? In function, uh, given uh, uh, given uh, if if actually so the function can be one to one or many to one, right? So it's both way. It's uh, one to one or many to one. So that's why it should be one to one, right? So from t to omega, t to w, it's it it may be one to one or many to one, and omega to t, it may be one to one or many to one, right? So now if you consider the intersection of those two, it should be one to one. It cannot be anything else. So that's why the functions are one to one. Okay, so that means if you consider the equivalence class where uh, you consider uh, all the statistics uh, such that uh, there is some function uh, through which you can write one statistic uh, using the other, then, then that equivalence class is actually unique. Okay, so minimal sufficient statistics may not be unique. But if you identify such statistics uh, by a single entity, that means by a single equivalence class, then actually uh, that equivalence class is unique. Okay. okay, so how to find uh, the minimal sufficient statistics? So the characterization. Of minimal sufficiency So any question? So the characterization is uh, so so the motivation behind uh, considering that likelihood ratio characterization uh, is uh, is this actually. So to find the characterization for minimal sufficiency. So the neyman fisher factorization theorem only gives you some sufficient statistics, but it uh, does not always give you the minimal sufficient statistics. So what is the characterization? The characterization simply says that, uh, so again, this is for the parametric family, for the parametric family. Okay, so here, um, if T is sufficient, uh, T is dependent. So I should write like this actually. Is a function of is a 
so in case of sufficiency you have seen that this thing this ratio likelihood ratio is a function of the statistic right and if it is minimal sufficient then the other way is also true so that means it simply says that tx curl equal to ty curl that implies an implied by delta x curl to the one equal to delta y curl theta one for all theta one theta two belonging to so in case of sufficiency so you had only this direction so that means if this is true then this is true but in case of minimal sufficiency the both both ways it should be true so that is the difference and uh, i will come back to this uh, characterization uh, towards the end of this chapter and i will try to emphasize on uh, why what is the dif what is the difference between sufficiency and minimal sufficiency and why the minimal sufficiency uh, is uh, important so given sufficiency why minimal sufficiency is important using this characterization i will try to test it not now but later so for the proof i am not going to uh, prove so this direction is already done right because it's uh, uh, for the sufficiency part so for the proof uh, see the notes i am not to the proof because it's a long proof so um, so that means here uh, it says that this uh, t x curl equal to t y curl that means whenever the statistics are true as when the uh, statistics are taking the same value at two different points then the likelihood ratios will have the same value for all the down theta to be belonging to speed theta and also if the likelihood ratios um, are the same at two different points at x curl and y curl then actually the statistics are same at those two points so then only this statistic is minimal sufficient so this whole thing this whole thing is equivalent to saying that the statistic t is minimal sufficient okay so you understand the difference between sufficiency the characterization of sufficiency and characterization of minimal sufficiency right it's clear right I believe it's fine. Okay, so let's look into few examples. Okay, first let's start with the exponential family. So, what is the PDF or PMF? It's simply x theta of x squared. So, let me write it first. Sorry. So if this So if x one to x n is our i i d from this f theta, then what is the uh, joint PDF? It's simply f theta of x curl. That is f for n of theta product of g of x i i equal to one to n. To the power of sum of dj theta dj 
passare. So this is the joint um, uh, joint PDF or PMF. So then, so let's consider the likelihood ratio characterization of sufficiency. So then, what is f theta one x squared by f theta two x squared? That is. So what are the things will remain? So that will only the things that will remain is a n theta one by x to the power of n theta two power of sum of x theta one minus b j theta two into So then, um, then if this um, so am I right? Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, so similarly, I need to write this f theta one of y card by f theta two of y card. That is power of n theta one power of n power of sum. So now the likelihood ratio calculation says that this is simply delta of x squared theta one theta two delta of y squared theta one theta two. So the likelihood ratio calculation says that if t x squared equal to t y squared, then actually these two should be true, right? So now what is t x squared and t y squared here? So T of x squared here is simply the sum of P1 of um, xi I equal to 1 to n, the sum of Pk of xi I equal to 1 to n, right? This is the T x squared. So, so similarly T y squared is same T1 of y i. So now this thing, if you look into this part, this part is nothing but this um, let me call this theta of theta one theta two transpose of this P of x squared. Because in this bj theta one and bj theta two, there is no i, so that does that sum will go inside. So then it's simply the sum of products, right? Product of few things. So the sum of product of few things. What are the product? So the first part is simply this difference, which is simply this theta theta one theta two. Let's call this difference to be the vector to be uh, eta transpose. Uh, sorry, eta theta one theta two. And the remaining part is since this sum is going inside, so that sum is simply this p of x squared, right? So that's why eta transpose theta one theta two t x squared. So this whole transpose actually is a vector. So similarly, this one also is theta of theta one theta two whole transpose t of y squared. 
So now if this TH one and TY two are same, then actually this delta and these these two things are same, right? So clearly, if T X curve equal to T Y curve, then delta X curve theta one theta two equal to delta Y curve theta one theta two for all theta one theta two. We don't need to skip here because they here theta one theta two are arbitrary. So that's why this is true. So hence, this T is uh, sufficient. Okay. So clear. So uh, clearly, using the Neumann-Fisher factorization theorem is much easier whenever you want to find sufficient statistic. But I just wanted to show that uh, using the uh, likelihood ratio factorization, you can also find the sufficient statistic. Now the point is. Uh, So claim that T is also minimal sufficient if the exponential family is full rank. So let me define what full rank is. But to have the minimal sufficiency, you need another extra thing over the exponential family, which is the full rank. Thing. Okay. Okay, we call that what is it theta of x of x a single observation for a single observation. It's simply a theta of g of x or of a uh, sum of x. So this is a family. So now I will define few things. The first one, uh, the exponential family. Is called minimal if there does not exist any linear constraint among b one theta of two and theta and Among b one x two x. Okay. So it's called minimal. The exponential family is called minimal if there does not exist any linear constraint between uh, or the linear constraint among these parameters or this. Uh, These values actually. So, say among these dis or among these dis, if there there is no linear constant, then the family is called minimal. Okay. The second one. A natural parameter space for of this exponential family is is G. Minus b one theta plus b two theta. Does the theta belong to the square theta? And 
and uh, obviously this is obviously true. So this x theta of x third is So this is actually obvious, right? So this is actually equal to one. So in most of the families, so if you simply consider this theta belongs to script theta, so then actually this is one, this is true. But uh, it's sometimes written if you simply uh, uh, get rid of this element, this, this thing. So if you, if you simply drop this theta belongs to script theta, then it may happen that for some choices of these parameters, this integral is not finite. Okay. So that's why these things are written, but you can simply consider only one of these two. That's fine. So the natural parameter space, the important thing is that the natural parameter space is the space where these bi's or bj's take value. Okay. The whole uh, picture takes value. So, and the canonical form. So if you reduce this uh, PDF or PMF uh, in terms of the parameters where these BJs are actual uh, BJ, BJs are actual parameters. So instead of looking into theta, if you look into these BJs, then it's a canonical. It's a canonical exponential cap. So the it's simply this if theta of x of x is simply this sum um, a of this b1 to bk, some function of that, sum g of x e to the power of sum of this bj into bj x. So you understand, right? What is the canonical form? In canonical form, you will get rid of this theta. And you will simply consider this b1 to bk with the underlying parameter. That's it, nothing more. So if you simply reparameterize this model uh, by replacing this theta by this b1 to bk, then you will get the canonical exponential time. Okay. Canonical form of this uh, of the same exponential time. And this form is important. You will see later that in most of the situation, uh, whenever uh, you want to infer about this model actually you are you will infer about these parameters from the sample not uh, not infer about this parameter so that's why the canonical form is important okay so the sufficiency minimal sufficiency these are all model model thing but whenever you will move to the uh, the uniformly minimum variance unbiased estimator then uh, you will simply consider some parameter for which you want to find uh, that estimator. So then you will see that in case of exponential family, all the things generally appear, all the estimators that you generally look into for the exponential family, those are um, UMVV for uh, this, uh, this, this parameter, not this parameter. So whatever you will get. Okay. Okay. Uh, one more thing is there. What is the full length? The third one. Is the natural parameter space. of a minimal p parameter exponential family as contains a p dimensional Open set. Then 
the underlying family underlying text family is full rank so it simply says that uh that actually you cannot reduce the model so for example uh, in case of uh, uh, multimodal distribution so there are two forms right so uh, you can write it in terms of p1 to pk and sum of pi is to be 1 so there is one restriction but if you remove that so so it to to remove that restriction you need to reduce the model so you need to uh, come to the uh, p1 to pk minus 1 and think of pk as 1 minus sum of pi i equal to 1 to k minus 1 right that is what you generally do in case of multinomial so similarly here you can simply consider the analogy between these two so if you cannot do something like that then it's full rank okay okay um now now uh, now towards the claim so the uh, now the aim is to prove the claim that if the underlying exponential family is full rank then uh, the sufficient statistic that you get that means that uh, that vector that is actually also minimal sufficient that is the claim right so to prove that claim so let me write the claim again so this t is minimal sufficient This t is nothing but the sum of d1 to sum of d2. If the ex is having this full rank, this is the claim. So now I am saying the more general version of this thing is true. The more general version means so you do not actually need um, the full rank thing. so you can relax this uh, full rank thing to get a minimal sufficient statistic so this is the theorem which says that let x1 to xn be the iib from x theta so so please do not confuse with the notation so sometimes i am writing the individual pdf for pmf as f theta sometimes i am also writing the joint pdf as f theta right so uh, whenever you will look into some statement uh, i think it will be clear to you so you whether this f theta is the individual pdf for pmf or the joint okay so sometimes i am mixing these things so that should not be the case but so this is the natural parameter space and uh, so i'll i'll explain the statement after writing uh, for all i equal to 0 for okay and this theta theta i minus theta theta not is vectors Or linearly independent. 
then P of X curl that means sum of P one of Okay. So that means, um, so here it says that if there exists p plus one number of parameters uh, in the parameter space such that uh, the natural parameters corresponding to those parameters, those belong to the natural parameter space. And the differences, if you look into their k plus one uh, uh, vectors, so now if you simply look into the these, these different vectors, so that means eta theta one minus eta theta naught, that means you are simply centering all the vectors uh, with respect to eta theta naught, nothing else. So if these vectors are linearly independent, and there are k number of linearly independent vectors, then this p is actually minimal sufficient. So let me do the proof quickly. Or maybe in the next class I will do the proof, but for that, so I'll start the proof, but not on the proof. Okay, so for the proof, um, I need a restatement of like root ratio and ratio. Okay, so uh, so the only thing that you know regarding how to prove the how to how to get the minimal sufficient statistic uh, is uh, the likelihood ratio characterization, right? That is what you know for the minimal sufficient. So that is what you need to use here also. But before that, uh, we need a restatement of that uh, characterization. So now let's um, consider this thing: uh, delta x curl theta one theta two. Be delta x curl, delta y curl, theta one theta two, right? If this is true, then this is same as if um, theta one x curl, if theta two x curl, if theta one y curl, if theta two y curl. Right? So this is true for all theta one. If theta one uh, x curl plus the uh, x curl, that is more than zero, and if theta one y curl plus y curl. So now So this is same as, so I'm simply putting this thing here, this thing here, nothing else. Uh, if theta one of y curve equal to if theta two of x curve. So that means uh, if you see uh, this this equality, this simply means that uh, for any two points x curve and y curve uh, in the support of the joint distribution, this ratio actually does not depend on the parameter, right? 
so that is for any x curl y curl belonging to the support of f theta the ratio x theta 1 x curl um, so does not depend on theta. Okay. For all theta belongs to So obviously uh, here zero by zero situation can happen, right? Because uh, there you are restricting that, but not here. So that's why you need to define this. Define zero by zero as equal to one. Then only you can write it. Otherwise, uh, there will be problem. Um. So that means uh, the restatement is simply says that. So that means T is minimal sufficient or I should write T is sufficient or minimal sufficient or x curl is equal to t y curl that implies or implies or implied by this uh, if theta of x curl and x of y curl is independent of theta. For all theta belongs to theta, and for all x curl y curl belonging to the support. Right? So this is the restatement. So instead of looking into the likelihood ratio, so you are simply looking into uh, the the ratio of the joint PDF again, but at two, uh, two different observed values. That's it. And you were saying that that ratio is independent of theta. So uh, in the proof of this theorem, uh, you will see that I'm going to use uh, this restatement, not the original version. And uh, I'll prove that in the next class. And I'll try to cover, I'll try to uh, complete this minimum sufficiency thing by, uh, by the next lecture. Otherwise, it will be late. So, any question? Okay, fine. Uh, so, even if uh, after going through the note, uh, if you have any question, so feel free to ask me in the next lecture. Or also, or or uh, another thing you can also do is uh, uh, send an email to me. Okay, uh, I'll try to answer. Sir, what is written on top? Yeah, they show f theta x curl upon f theta y curl. Okay, sir. So instead of looking into this delta x curl of theta on theta 2, that means ratios with respect to theta on with respect to different values of the parameter, you are looking into different uh, values of the observed sample. That's it. That, that is the only difference you are looking into. And uh, whenever these two things are same, then actually this ratio is independent of theta. These two things are equivalent. That's, that's, that is what I'm going to use in the proof. So that's why uh, this restatement is uh, useful. Fine. Okay. So then uh, that's it for today. Um, see you guys on Monday. Okay. Bye.